Hello, everyone. Welcome to What You Need to Know. I am Sybil Wilkes, and I welcome you here on this Tuesday evening. What You Need to Know is our newsletter. We have uh, it every day. We send it out to you via email Monday through Friday morning. And uh, we talk about a lot of things that are in the newsletter, as well as we are able to have discussions that are with segments that are in the newsletter. And today, we talk about HBCUs. And from our HBCU corner, we welcome our friend, Dr. Glenda Glover, uh, the president of Tennessee State University. How are you, doctor? I'm just great. How are you? I'm great. You look fabulous. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And uh, Dr. Glover has a guest today. Our guest is Dr. Carmen Walters, president of Tougaloo College of Jackson, Mississippi. Hello, doctor. How are you? Doctor I'm and doctor. great. Yes, I'm great. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. I'm well. It's really great to see you again. And uh, great to talk to you, ladies. Here we are. Um, as I said, you know, what you need to know newsletter. And we have taken a lot of things that we learned from Tom Joyner over the years and, and put them into this newsletter uh, and, and also now into this uh, streaming format in which we talk about a lot of the uh, subjects that are of great interest to our African-American community. And of course, um, we, we talk about HBCUs. We have an HBCU corner, we have health and wellness. Uh, we talk about what's in the news these days as well as um, uh, getting giving people a taste of, of Tom Joyner, uh, as we have a number of our comedians who join us as well. If you'd like to participate and be a part of our What You Need to Know news crew, please go to SybilWilks.com. That's Sybil like the crazy girl, Wilks like John Wilkes Booth. Just give us your name and your email address, and I promise we'll have it in your email box every Monday through Friday morning. Here we are on Tuesday and talking about HBCUs with our friend, Dr. Glenda Glover. And Dr. Glover, um, this is also uh, Women's History Month, and I think it's wonderful that we are talking to two women of history uh, and who are the, the uh, heads of two distinguished historically black colleges uh, and, and universities. Sorry, those are the dogs and the, the little Randy when we talk about to strong women. Um, but uh, do tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, historically black college and, and especially about black female presidents. Do we have a, a, a long and growing history now? Well, I'll, I'll go first, but thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. And it's just a pleasure to be back on the, the show tonight to talk about one of our favorite subjects, HBCUs, the role HBCUs have played in developing and shaping uh, African Americans and other students around the country and producing such great leaders. Uh, it's HBCU time, it's HBCU month, you know, February, September, every month is HBCU month. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so we're so happy to talk about this subject because uh, it, it, this is now the year of HBCU. I think Vice President Harris has made this the year of HBCU for her. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard graduate is the one of the most prominent HBCU, second only to Tougaloo and Tennessee State University. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, mm -hmm. And so because we have such a rich uh, history in the HBCU world, we're just so excited to always talk about HBCU. But you know, because we've taken so little and done so much with it. You know, the last time I was asked that question about HBCU's relevance, which I think we'll never get again. Now I think they're just too embarrassed to ask the question now after Kamala Harris and, I, and they see what help the produce, people we produce. And I said, that is the wrong question to ask. The question to be asked is, how do we take? How do we take such little uh, that we had and produce the greatest graduates the world has ever known? Our model right. should be shared with everybody around the world because yeah, of how that's, right. that's, right. that's the model now. So <laughs> that's that's how much we think of HBCUs. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Dr. Walters may have some more comments. Well, listen, thank you uh, to you, Ms. Wilkes, and to the greatest leader, mentor, sister, and friend, Dr. Glenda Glover. Uh, um, we are all, you know, using her as our role model. And so it's an honor to be here tonight. And I just want to say hats off to you, Dr. Glover, and to all the women who are leading these institutions, not only just HBCUs, but HBCUs during the COVID pandemic, which mm. is the hardest thing that any 
anyone could ever do. One of the female governors said that uh, Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did, <laughs> just backwards and in high heels. And I think that's what we are doing. You know, we are running these institutions uh, on a shoestring of a budget, and having these sisterly support systems uh, really helps in this time. And we're able to do it, uh, as as Madam uh, as as Madam President just said. You know, on a shoestring budget, things that are so difficult. And then the other thing we bring to the table, besides the rigor and uh, and the the faculty that we have, but it's the care and the concern. Mm -hmm. And when you send your children to our institutions, they leave leaders. They they leave us, and they're leaders like Kamala Harris, like Derek Johnson, who's over in AACP, one of our alums, yes, like yes, Congressman yes. Benny Thompson, and so many others. You know, we have so many doctors and lawyers, and they're all from right here at Tougaloo College in Lulu, Mississippi. But we're doing great things with the help of others who see the importance of HBCUs, especially the women presidents who are doing this now. So congratulations to all of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, congratulations to you. I think that, uh, and Dr. Walters, you have been there at Tougaloo for just about not quite two years now? Not quite two years. And it has been the most exciting two years ever. Um, you know, we were so excited to receive a very large gift from uh, Mackenzie Scott, which was the largest gift our institution had seen, which was six million. Prior to that, we received the gift of four million in honor of our former president, Dr. Beverly Wade Hogan. These kinds of gifts is what we are looking for. We need people to step up to the plate and partner with us and invest in us because we mm -hmm. are worth the investment. And so um, we've been very excited by those gifts, but we're looking for many more. Sure. And, and you want people, and, and Dr. Glover, you uh, certainly have said this over the years, you want people to invest in the college, in the university, the way that you are investing in the young people who are going out into the world to do great things. Exactly. And, and, and we have to, it's an investment. HBCUs, I mean, I, that, that's an investment that we can't overlook. We talk about where you want to spend your money. Last December, we, we did seminars about how to, you know, save your tax dollars. You know, in my other life of being a CPA, you know, <laughs> we had to talk about that. And we said, well, the, one of the best investments you can have is not the stock market. It's not the, 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 the notes and, and, and other things. It's about the HBCU investment. Mm -hmm. Put your money in HBCUs. The return is so tremendous on HBCU investment. You will get it for the rest of your life, and you can do it in so mm -hmm. many ways. You, do, you have so many students. You can choose the student. You can choose a uh, piece of property. You can, you can choose faculty, endowed chairs. You can just choose a way to invest in HBCUs. And it makes us so excited because we're telling a story. I mean, it, it continues to evolve. We continue to grow and do so many great things. As we like, just, just like uh, Dr. Carmen just said, you know, Mackenzie Scott chose Tougaloo to give them a huge gift. I mean, that's that is so significant in her first year or, or second year of her administration to come and get that kind of money to come into Tougaloo College. So we all commend her because you know the, the, the women presidents have a we have a more difficult time than others because we have mm -hmm. to immediately. Well, first at HBCUs, we're the only institution where you have to come out the gate. Defending yourself, you defend mm -hmm. who you are before you make a conversation. You defend who you are and why you are. And so, and then for females, they'll ask me, well, what are some of the skills that a, a, a woman president should have? Is it the same mm -hmm. skills that a person president should have? <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. listen, have a strategic vision, you know, look mm -hmm. long term while addressing the short term needs. You know? So it's no more vision for a woman than it is for a man. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. right. you know, so much work has to be done. And they're about, I think they're 17 or 18 now, women, black women presidents. Mm -hmm. of HBCUs. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple that are presidents of non HBCUs that we're doing. And so so we move, we're, we're, we're moving that needle. And so we're, we're very proud of that. When you all were in, uh, and, and I believe you both went to, I, I know you went to Tennessee State, uh, Dr. Glover, mm -hmm. and Dr. Walters, I, I believe that you did also go undergrad at an HBCU, and, yes. and when you're sitting there, do you have visions of coming back and doing great things at the schools as, as you now have done? Did Was that ever a part of your, your mindset? 
Well, I will speak for myself. I really thought I was going to be this great lawyer and that I was going to be solving all the world's problems. Uh, but I think this job is a calling. And so every mm -hmm. job I've had has prepared me to be in this role, although I wasn't looking uh, to do this until late in my career when I realized, you know, this is where my heart is. Mm -hmm. And um, I was working in PWIs and, you know, just, you know, you're making brick without straw every time you do this work. And so I just felt that this is where I needed to be. And these doors began to open. And so I said yes to Tougaloo. And it was the best thing I could have ever done. The reward is so great. I live on campus. Uh, my troubled students, I schedule them to come to the dining room table in my mm. home so, mm, nice. so that I can play the mama role. And that works so well for them. But it works even better for me because I can see the fruition of, uh, of all the hard work when I see these students who are coming back to me with their problems uh, resolved or them feeling like they can handle it. So nice. it's such a great joy to do this work. It really is a calling. I, you know, and she speaks of what it really means to attend an HBCU. Mm -hmm. you, know, you start with a good quality education. That's number one. Always you go to HBCU to get a quality education. You know, mm -hmm. yes. And then you look at the mentoring, the fact that you can knock mm -hmm. on the president's door and talk mm -hmm. to her. I live mm -hmm. on campus too. So there's nothing for students to walk, you know, they, they take the shortcut and go through the yard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, Hello, president. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. they, they bring the doorbell and I say, I'm like, thank you for the today. You know, <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> where's your mask? And they said, I'm looking for my scholarship. I said, would you, you know, your scholarship was not in this house, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, so some people right. have to live on campus for that yes. reason. Yes. But, and, you know, on, on HBCUs, you just yeah. come to the president, you know, we'll, we'll just you know, we'll walk the campus, just have the kind of relationship. You know, the only bad thing I say is that at HBCU, it always starts with the president. They don't just, I mean, yeah. students, uh -huh. alumni, others, and won't go to the dean of students. They don't go to, they don't That's go right. to the, the, the box, the box and stops the there, right? <laughs> That's, That's just, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, we've got used to it. We start, they start with the president. Mm -hmm. To be able to meet their needs. That's what. That's why they elect you as president because they saw something mm -hmm. in you that, that could that could that could go reach out to the students and pour something in the students. So that's what we do. We love doing it. You know, I love. I get up every morning. How can I make TSU better? You know, what that's students right. today? That's what. That's that's what. That's our mentality. And and that's why and I talk about this a lot. How we can make our universities better. You know, mm -hmm. women presidents. And we, I know it's, the road is a little harder because. That people don't know there, there's some discrimination. They don't even know they're discriminating against you. They even know they're making comments that are offensive. You know, yes. and they tell you, oh, you're just so lucky. I don't think they know they're really, it's, they're really inferior in you. <laughs> they, they, just inferior. It makes you inferior. And he's furious when you hear that. But that's probably. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, I want to thank you so much for coming on today. And, and uh, Dr. Glover, I always look forward to our conversations. Dr. Walters, it is great talking to you. Thank and you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to uh, thank Dr. Glover absolutely for um, her, her her partnership and sponsorship of our What You Need to Know newsletter. We so appreciate uh, the HBCU Corner, and uh, we look forward to our continuing partnership as well as um, our relationship here. I, I just adore you, and uh, I have so yes. much respect for you and for all that you do for, for not just us, but that you do for the HBCU community. You are such a valuable and, and wonderful leader. We really appreciate you. Um, and also, uh, Dr. Walters, I always like to say this with people I meet at, uh, from Tougaloo. Um, if it wasn't for Tougaloo, I would not be here. Okay. <laughs> my grandparents met at Tougaloo. Oh, um, wonderful. My grandfather <laughs> was on his way to becoming a president of a HBCU. He ended up at Lincoln in Missouri. But at the time, he was hired to teach over the summer. And he was engaged to a young woman uh, in Kansas City. And when my grandmother told her friends that he was going down to Tougaloo uh, to teach for the summer, they said, oh, you watch out. He's going to come back with a Tougaloo woman. <laughs> And she said, oh, no, my son is engaged to this young woman, and he's going to come back, and they're going to get married. He got down there, saw my grandmother from Yazoo City, 
Yes. And that was all she wrote. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. He, he had to go back to Kansas City and say, you know, nice knowing you. <laughs> and and uh, they, they got married and had my mom. So, um, Oh, I, I love that story. I love I, that. We I have to get you to campus so you can tell that story. Yeah, right. absolutely. I have had an opportunity to uh, be a part of uh, the Alumni Association. And so we want to, um, here in Texas, uh, it was down in Houston, actually. Yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Hosea and, and all the other great people were so wonderful to me, but I would love to come down there and visit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we have to make that happen. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, as the president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, which was my mother and my godmother sorority, I thank you, Dr. Glover, for all that uh, your sorority does and, and in your sponsorship of our HBCU Corner. Dr. Walters, thank you again, and we will see you, you. next month. Dr. Thank Walters. you so much. Dr. Wallace and Mimi Alpha Kappa Alpha also. Yes, ah. I'm, I'm in the sorority as well. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Glover, for this opportunity. Right. Thank you all so much. All right. Okay. And please come back again. We'll see you okay. all soon. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, it is Tuesday. That was wonderful. And I, and I always like telling that story, especially with my great-grandmother. I'm saying that my grandfather was going to uh, come back and marry that, that nice young lady from Kansas and and uh, those ladies knew best. Uh, he saw that girl from Yazoo City and, and, and he, was, he was taken. So um, it is Tuesday and it's J. Anthony Brown Day. And of course, uh, we have Jay. Okay, he was? Okay, so this is a lot like a Whitney's funeral. Remember when, um, uh, who was that? Dionne Warwick said, oh, he's here, but he's not here. Okay, so he was here and, and now he is here. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Brown. Hey, Sybil. I wish you guys had left me up so I didn't hear what you were talking about, but I didn't hear what your special oh. guest was. Now, what were you talking about? We were talking about HBCUs with two dynamic women who are presidents of their respective schools. Uh, that was Dr. Glenda Glover of Tennessee State. We have, you know, she's been um, with us a number of times on the Joiner Show, and we've been on her campus. And also Dr. Carmen Walters, who's the president of Tougaloo College. In, in Mississippi, Tougaloo, Tougaloo, Tougaloo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which is just fun to say, isn't it? <laughs> Can you hear me? OJ, oh, now we can't hear. Are you trying to be or, or are you frozen? That joke took me out. <laughs> OK, it's not me today. It is not me. OK, so Jay, um, we are going to what's trending. And I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, this particular story. Uh, this is um, regarding Adidas model uh, of sportswear. She mm -hmm. posted, uh, Adidas just posted a photo of this young woman who, and, and I saved the story for you because she's rocking armpit hair, according to the headlines, and the internet is loving it. They posted a photo of the model and professional pole dancer and choreographer Leela Davis yes. showing her, off her armpit hair on Friday morning and the internet immediately responded. And they had 40,000 likes. Yes, love it. And I mean, more than 1,500 comments. Well, why would you think people who work out have time to shave their armpits? They don't. They have other things. What <laughs> <laughs> makes you think people who work out vigorously is concerned about their armpit hair. Some of us like armpit hair. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you. That's why I saved the story for you. Yeah. You, you if forty thousand like... people uh, uh, answered that, that's another. Give me another forty. So I would say eighty thousand people like armpit hair, or just hair in general. Yeah. I'm I'm the right. hairy man. Love it. Gotta have it. Yes. Why not? So uh, we do have a video, and this is a young woman. I want you to take a look at this. This young woman is very proud of, of all of her naturalness and, okay. um, and really makes uh, people feel uh, a certain kind of way about themselves. Okay, so let's hit it. A lot of us are so disconnected to what's real, and it's so sad because so many people hate the way they look without makeup, hate the way they look without weave, hate the way their natural body hair looks that grows out of their body. It's like we were all taught how to feel and how to think about ourselves without even giving the opportunity to know how we feel about ourselves naturally. You know what I'm saying? Not only does that affect how you see yourself, but that affects how you see other people too. It's time to disconnect from what's fake and connect to your true self, which is real. 
Love it. So a lot of people are saying one Instagram users thank Adidas for the post saying thank you for supporting women and having the choice to do with their bodies as they please. Men can have body hair, so why is it not fully accepted in society for women? Well, you know, the only problem is as long as she doesn't have mutton chops and a mustache, we do. <laughs> <laughs> that comes that comes later, you know. <laughs> if she's if she's that hairy, I think mutton chops and uh, a mustache are on her menu, but hey. <laughs> You feel good about it. I feel good about it. I like it. Well, I, I that's why I wanted it. you to, to speak on it. No I know how you it. feel about it. Yeah. All right. So now it's time to talk what you need to know. Jay <laughs> in Washington, D.C., in the nation's capital. They are fighting to make Washington, D.C. a state. The yes. city of D.C. and the, the fight for statehood being led by the dynamic representative there, Eleanor Holmes Norton, uh, the Democrat representing the district. She's been there for, I think, 15 terms. And uh, she is a non-voting member of the Congress. And now that they have control, the Democrats have control of the House, the Senate, and the White House, and slim leads in the Senate and the White, and the, and the Congress, of course, and um, in the, in, in the House of Representatives. But they think that this can happen this year, um, and and they're hoping Great. to do away with the filibuster. Uh, I got the flag as well. I already got the flag. So you have the flag. The flag for DC. Under the uh -huh. bottom it says "Go Go," right? And it's a picture of Ben's chili bowl. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> it says it says "Go Go" under the bottom. Uh huh. Go Go. Picture of Ben's chili bowl. Or the big chair. I like the big chair in DC too now. Uh, you, what's the big chair? Oh, I don't know what area it is, but there's a huge, probably four story chair oh. just sitting in the middle of nowhere in DC. I think I've seen a picture of that. I thought yeah. you were talking about the chair that Abraham Lincoln sits no, in. No, no, no. Uh, I'm okay. just, it's just an empty. I'm sure whoever built that had to be smoking weed that day and said, I will be. I would make a big ass chair and put it right <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> so you this would be big chair. Oh my god. I don't remember seeing the big chair. Yeah. I, I think I would remember that. Yeah, it's a some it's a major landmark in uh DC. But definitely been chili on, on the flag. And go go. And go go, yeah. Right. Go go music. Yeah. Okay, somebody says it's in southeast DC. Yeah. So uh if you can run out there and get a picture of Right now, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. It's a big um, ass, it's civil. It's a big it's ass big. chair. It's just, it's just a huge. How did I miss this? How, How could you I miss, miss the big chair? I know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's going to be called the, the 51st state of Washington Douglas Commonwealth, named after Frederick, Frederick Douglas. Douglas. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. My hero. He took it to the he took it to the hill with a white woman. I I'm, I have so much respect <laughs> for him. <laughs> He married That's black, funny. but he ended up with white. So, hey. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we have somebody who is writing. A, oh, wow. Okay. A lot of conversation about the chair. Uh, let's see. Washington. Uh, I can't. Uh, That's a lot. I can't read. It was built in 1958. Okay. Made out of real it's mahogany. It's made of real mahogany. Mm -hmm. A tough wood. And yeah. survive years of outdoor Washington D.C. weather. Yes, well, it's a big much. ass chair. It's just. I appreciate a, a picture, but thank you for that description. Yeah, thank you for that information. We asked for a picture. What we need is a picture. <laughs> we have we have enough information on the chair. <laughs> Um, Jay, let me tell you about the mayor. She's a, she's one really uh, tough and, and a really great woman. Uh, mayor Muriel Bowser was a key witness at yesterday's hearing. And she said that, you know, she talked about the, fifth, the flags at the, along Pennsylvania Avenue with the 51 uh -huh. stars and seeking the right to wrong uh, the, the city, which has been denied statehood. And Republicans say that their opposition to D.C. statehood is based upon the comp of, of the Constitution. But in her opening statement, she spoke about taxation without representation, and she talked about race. The right. district is majority African American, and the drive to correct the wrong was replaced by racist efforts to subvert a growing and thriving majority Black city. Well, you. we know the real reason they don't want D.C. to be a state. Two senators. They get two 
fucking senators. Yeah. In an all black state. Yeah. Yeah. Deal with yeah. That yeah. And, it, and, yeah. and it's going to, and, and, you know, they, one of the Republican senators says, well, you know, you're going to get Democratic sen uh, senators here. And so it's like, <laughs> well, they may all vote, you know, in, in their own ways, but it doesn't, and because we may be a majority black state doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be only black senators um, wow. but it is it's larger than the states of vermont and wyoming so yeah, you can't and even where, say and that the place where they start um the vote at each year it's bigger than yeah. that yeah um, yeah dixville notch yes yeah. that's right <laughs> but it has to do it has to do well what a, uh, i know back in the day in the 18 and 1900s dc the people NDC did have the right to vote and they took it away. And now we have what we have now. But the, the problem is like we were saying, it's the two senators and it's how are the Republicans gonna control an all black yeah. state? They can't, yeah. they can't, yeah, they, can. they, can. they know yeah. they can't win. And with two senators, it will really mix some things up. And it's, it has to do with us being black. Not only, not only DC, but um, Puerto Rico also, you know, definitely. Mm -hmm. it, the time has oh, come. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and here's the other thing. It is taxation without representation because they, uh, D.C. residents pay, pay more taxes, than federal right. aid than, they pay more than 22 other states. That's crazy. Well, it's crazy and it's not right. And uh, I hope what <laughs> Biden does, I hope Biden just says, you know, screw the filibuster. Uh, amend all the bills you want to pass, pass them, and let the chip fall where they may. First of all, mm -hmm. the stuff that they're going to pass, Republicans are going to have a tough time getting rid of it. Are you going to get rid of voters' rights? Are you going to get rid of the right for oh, women to have to voice? Are you going to get rid of, yeah. you know, some of the places that we'll be able to live? Uh, gun laws. I don't. I let let the chip. Obamacare. Because, Obamacare. You, you can call it what you want to. It ain't going anywhere. Um, um, from day one, Mitch McConnell has always said that his job is, what did he call himself, the undertaker, the terminator, mm -hmm. some stuff, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, and he set on not agreeing with any laws that come out of the, uh, from the Democrats. Democrats. And you yeah. know, once he gets in power, he's going to do whatever he wants to do. You guys have the power, do it. Get rid of the filibuster, pass the bills you want to and let the chips fall where they may. That's just my and, opinion. And this is a great opportunity to talk about right. people who are thinking um, that you know we don't have anything to do. If you're not registered to vote, if people around you are not registered to vote, get it done. Get right. it done because every all these uh, Republican held states, uh, that's what they're trying to do is change the voting laws. Change to make the it laws. Difficult you know what we were talking vote. last week? Whenever we start to get a, a foothold, it's like new rule. I mean, they did yeah. it to Tiger when he was kicking ass. They made the, uh, <laughs> they, they changed made the, the course back. and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now when Negroes make a touchdown, they can't dance. You can't dance? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. There's the big yeah, chair. That's the chair. Yeah, that's the chair. That's the chair. <laughs> Ta da! Ta da! Yeah, it's Thanks, huge. Chica. That's the big chair. I want to sit in that chair. You know, chair I'm just there. used to the big chair we used to have in the Joiner studio. I, no, I no, no, not like that. that. Yeah, that chair was a, a whole different chair from Mr. Tom Joyner. <laughs> yes. And, and you know, Jay, we used to be able to spin around in that chair, and then people yeah. said they didn't he like stopped it. Us. Remember, remember, David Cantor wanted us to stop saying we. Well, he, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Hector Hannibal too. Hey, yeah, Hector, Hector, how are you? <laughs> Tell them to stop saying we. we. <laughs> oh, okay, that's oh, what oh, Victor the was. It was um, it was two people that had the same name, Chip or something like that. Oh, Skip. oh the Skips, yeah, Skip Murphy. And what? But something they made us stop saying. What was it? Oh, Skip. I don't remember. I don't remember what that was. I don't was there a black skip or a white skip? No, I don't remember. Oh no, we had no. white Gary. I remember white Gary. White right. Gary. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we um, speaking of registering to vote and getting involved. Here's a young man um, who is uh, very active in the social justice legal field, and his name is Lee Merritt.
and he has his eyes set on becoming the next attorney general for the state of Texas in 2022. I heard about this guy. Yes. Yeah, he's great. Um, Lee Merritt is a name that you you hear a lot, especially in this area, but definitely uh, he's been involved in other states and and righting the wrongs of other states. Uh, he was representing the family of Botham John. Uh, Botham John was the young man, black man who was killed in his own apartment by a Dallas policewoman. Uh, a Tatiana Jefferson in Fort Worth, Texas. She was killed by police in her family's home. Uh, as Is that the one where they shot through games. the window? The one yeah. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she was playing video games with her nephew. And right, they came and, down, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Edwards was a young man, a teenager who was driving away from a party with his brother and other uh, guys to get away from a party that was getting a little wild. And the policeman called himself shooting out the tires of the car and shot and killed this young boy, Jordan Edwards. Um, he was also involved in the Ahmaud Arbery case in Brunswick, Georgia. He's representing the family of Marvin Scott, the 26 year old uh, black man who died last week after he was taken to the county uh, jail in Collin County. Um, and so he is very, very, very active. Uh, he's a graduate of uh, Morehouse. He's a Morehouse man and a Temple University Law School graduate. And he's planning to take on the attorney general of Texas, Ken Paxton, who has his own challenges uh, including some investigations into uh, his business, as well as being a major Donald Trump supporter. Well, um, I think, so we I think a see. lot of these people are going to go, you know, are going to jump off the bridge with Donald Trump. I don't think, I keep telling you, Sybil, I don't think he has the power that he had. I mean, to be taken off of Twitter and not have the bully pulpit where he can constantly speak to his followers weekly mm -hmm. and every day, it, you know, it puts a, it, it, it dampens his spirits and dampens his ability to preach to the choir, to preach to his mm -hmm. people. I mean, he can go on Fox every now and then, but what, what we're finding out is Fox is not the world, and that's what right. Republicans can't accept. What, what you guys are trying to implement is not the world. The world has changed. Don't you see a black man with a white woman on every other commercial? Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Don't you see two guys kissing on commercials, selling soap? Duh. Two women. Duh. <laughs> it's a Games different world. Advertising. This is the. This is America. It has changed. It's my it's dad it's, is America. And, and I tell you, man, every time I see Ted Cruz open his, excuse me, mm. fucking mouth to say anything, anything, it just like sickens me. Like I want to vomit in my hat or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Those are nice hats. Don't don't uh, wear yeah. the hat. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Um, no, we I, will talk about. Uh, we can talk about uh, Donald Trump and in, in especially uh, in the entertainment section. I want to um, talk about the stimulus checks. Do you know people who are waiting for their? I know you're not because you, yeah, you, I'm, you're not, I'm waiting. Well by it. I'm waiting. If I get one, <laughs> if I get one. Hey. Uh, well, the I, got, is, I got the six hundred dollar check. Was that a year ago? I remember getting you that. You did? Yeah. I sent it or, back. Was that a I PPP? Was that a part of your business? I don't know. I sent it back. I didn't want no trouble. I think it was a trick. I, I know. Yeah, so I sent mine back. I didn't send it back. Okay. I took it to the IRS personally. And I, <laughs> I walked it. <laughs> it's a Jedi mind trick. Uh-uh. <laughs> Like you're not gonna fall for the okie doke. I'm not falling for the okie doke. I'm not falling for the banana in the tailpipe. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, people who are uh, experiencing, who are waiting for their checks, they're experiencing some delays, and so uh, they are saying that uh, because it's tax filing season, uh, a lot of their attention, the IRS, a lot of their attention is going to, you know, taking our money that way, and uh -huh. and uh, so it's slowed down in sending the checks, and now the child tax credit expanded by the latest stimulus package increases the benefit from $2,000 annually to as much as $3,600 per child and will be paid through monthly cash payments from July through December. So that's where that money is. So they're going to get you that have, much money every month? They're, no, they're, they're going to uh, spread it out. The $3,600 or however oh. much you're going to get is going to be uh, spread out over that, what, six months. That's a good thing. I want. July, I tell you, August, it's going to be hard for the Republicans to beat Biden when he's putting money in pockets and shots in arms. You know, it really yeah. is. It's going to, and then you know he's getting ready to 
cash in on infrastructure, which is going to put people to work. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully. And, you know, I, I kind of think it's going to be a done deal, you know, uh, in terms of the Republican gaining any strength, you know, because it's like, what have you guys done? What have you done? They, what do you but the voting do? public is fickle and they have to oh be reminded. God. We right. have to remind them every chance we get um, that what they're doing. Um, because we are looking you now at um, people waiting for their checks. And so um, taxpayers who don't receive their stimulus relief by direct deposit by uh, what is today, the 23rd, so the 24th tomorrow, um, mm -hmm. which is Elena's birthday, by the way, Jay, um, should watch for a payment in the mail, according to the IRS. Please don't call the IRS, okay? Please. No, they won't call you. Don't call they them. They won't call you. Do not call them, okay? They don't call you. They send you if a they letter. Don't, if you don't get a check, leave it alone, all right? <laughs> check out IRS Get My Payment Tool. It, it works. Yeah, and that's that's what we were saying. Right. Um, go to Get My Payment Tool on irs.gov. To or there's also semimydamnchat.org. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget to go to I Need My F and Money. Dot com. You can try that one too. Um, yeah, that you may up. go there, but don't say that to them when you call them. Okay? I need my effing money. Don't, not a don't good listen way to me playing with the IRS. That's not a group of people you want to play with, okay? No, you don't. No, don't play. Don't play. Okay. Um, Nicole Rabb, go yeah. to the IRS website. It takes one minute to check. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Cool. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm, I don't know why she's got running commentary saying, you and Jay don't need the money. We don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a year ago, we got fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sybil, I quit. I want, I want that to go on the record. You quit. Yeah, I quit. Yeah. We got fired. <laughs> Mark okay, you down is so, quit. Yeah. Okay. Mark you down is quit. Mark yes. us down. Her, fire, me, right. All of us. We got fired. Well, you know what's so weird? I told y'all to come on. I did. <laughs> y'all was looking at me like, where's Jay? No, the next thing we knew, we, we yeah. saw the door close and that yeah. was it. It was, was like, going, see y'all. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't remember seeing that. I, I, <laughs> Too funny. Yeah, Too it's funny, funny that we can laugh at it now, but it wasn't funny when we was going through it. I oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Andrea! We Is sure that Andrea? did. Andrea said, that's Andrea. She said, we sure did. We got fired. That's the gun runner. <laughs> That's the gospel gun runner. Hey, the gospel Andrew. Gun runner. What people don't know is I didn't know anybody's name. I, well, I knew that name. I couldn't remember anybody's name. So I gave <laughs> Andrea, who was the most Christianish person on the show. She really is. God love uh, her. Save, save and could probably talk to Jesus and get a bunch of us in heaven if she wanted to. <laughs> That's uh, right. Tight with God. Tight with God. So we found out that she had Bibles. So we just added the fact that she sold Bibles and guns, and we <laughs> called her. We called her the Christian gun runner, and uh, <laughs> oh, and it and it, and she loved it. She, she loved it, and it stuck. It, it stuck. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Everybody had a nickname. Everybody. Had, um, I, I heard from the the African uh, African dancer yesterday. Uh, she oh, called uh, her birthday. Jada? Uh, uh huh. And uh, Memphis or Honey Memphis. Jack, as we call Remember him. Remember, new guy. The guy had been working there eight years, and I still and he was still new guy. New guy. <laughs> and, 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 he he like, and he was and he, and he would say, "My name's KJ." And like <laughs> new guy, yeah, new guy. <laughs> hey, new guy. <laughs> he was. I think KJ was there after you ran away. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, right. and someone referred to you as the Harriet Tubman of the group, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> told y'all to come on. I told oh. y'all to come on, yeah. 
we good here, Master. But it was fun. You know what? As much as much as we made fun of that job, it was some of the best times we ever had in our Oh my gosh. Oh it really yes, was. for sure. Yeah. For absolutely sure. Um <laughs> here is a story of a school board, uh vice uh president of the uh, San Francisco school board has been pressured to resign over some earlier tweets she made years ago about Asians. About Asians. Yeah, mm -hmm. her name is Allison Collins. Uh, she is San Francisco's African-American school board vice president. I guess that means she is the African-American mm -hmm. uh, re refusing to resign after receiving backlash over the tweets. Uh, the entire senior staff denounced her for her series of tweets in which she later uh -huh. explained it's she a was time speaking. Good job. It's a time ago. Got to quit the job. It's time for you go. Bye bye, your asshole. Goodbye to you. She was seeking right. to combat. That's enough. I'm not doing anymore. I'm not doing. Okay. You'll get. Okay, you'll well, get letters. You'll get letters. I'm, it's not my you show. You won't get it. I won't get no. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, she was seeking to combat anti-black racism in the Asian community. Her daughter heard boys teasing a Latino about Trump. Mexicans are the KKK. And the boys are Asian American. She spoke up when none of the other staff did. Uh, she goes on to talk about her best friend felt ostracized when she speaks up about anti-Black hate in the Chinese community. And um, so she says that she is not going to apologize. Uh, others, including the mayor of San Francisco, have called on her to resign. Uh, that is the African-American female mayor there, London Breed, and community groups are calling for it. But however, Others have, are the school or president, uh, Gabriela Lopez, is defending her and saying, Let me ask you, know, you a question. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. with, the L, with LGBT, LG, is what it LGBT, mm -hmm. um, Asian rights, um, the LGBT covers everything. Do you feel somehow that um, the black movement gets pushed back because of what? Is in the news and what's in the forefront right now? Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. And how do um, we get? How do we get? How do we all get that same light? You know what I mean? Because when they're not talking about Black Lives Matter right now, they're talking about Asian. Right. And and I think that it's a good thing that we're having the discussion because we do need to talk about uh, the anti-Asian bigotry and what have you. Um, just as and and I, but I think that all of us are working in our own way every day. We may not right. get a six o'clock news spotlight every day, but I think that there is a large community that is working every day in order to uh, to to make things happen. That makes sense. That's cool. I just hope that you know with with it seems like another stepping stone. Not so much as a stepping stone, but something that we have to deal with as Americans. I just don't want. The black movement to get pushed uh, off of the burner, as, right. as a, so to speak, where we're not talking about it, we're not interested in it anymore. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 quizzical, um, and and I would be interested to hear from uh, people who are watching us and, and their thoughts on that. Um, whether you think that you know that our focus on Black Lives Matter is being pushed out of the way um, by some LGBTQ causes. Um, or by the uh, by, by what's going on uh, in the Asian community, and and especially since over the last year and a half uh, with Donald Trump and and all of the horrible things that he said. Yes. Yeah. No, I do, I do, I do take. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but I take. It, it gives us some thought when you hear saying it's the same. It's the same as the civil rights movement. I, yeah, I a lot of a lot of people I, take ownership with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I take, I take. I don't want to use the word offense, but I just don't think it's the same. I just mm -hmm. don't think those those um, those um, those movements are the same as the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't, you know. But that's just me, and I don't know if a lot of people agree with me or not. So. I, I think I, I think especially a lot, of, uh, especially older people, um, mm -hmm. feel that way. I'm not sure about a, a, a lot of the younger, but the thing that has always come to me is that. When you talk about inequality and, and you talk about wanting uh, your rights, um, when we wake up every morning and people look at us, they we see back. black people. <laughs> when, when, when gay people wake up, white gay people wake up every morning, they see white people. They right. don't necessarily see gay people. And so that you know is a way of kind of saying, this is with us every day. This is yes. how they see us. And this is you know how we have to work our way through life. 
Um, but I think that they're all they're all injustices, and, and that this and, is something. And that not to take away from the Asian movement, but uh, it's it's. And then I wouldn't say that they're passing for white, but I will say that a lot of Asians no, get not. to live in white communities that mm -hmm. blacks would never be allowed to live in. And I even don't know today, you think you say that? Today? Yeah, I think today it, it, it's still it's still prevalent that that mm -hmm. happens. You know, yeah. I, well, I know you what, know what? This is before our time, but uh -huh. after World War II or during World War II, when all of the Japanese were corralled into concentration right. camp. You know, not concentration, but they were, you know, in, in, in yeah, the Yeah, they were put in, uh, what were those? They were and, called concentration camps. They were called something. I know what you're talking about. But, but they then, were, you know, it's like if, they were if taken playing, from their homes if, and their businesses. If you're playing a group of people, if you're playing the card game, a group of people <laughs> who were treated we bad. We win every time. Uh, yeah. We win every time for we 400 time. years, you know, yeah. of slavery, you know. Yeah. I don't know. And they got reparations. We're yes. still <laughs> We're yes. still waiting, um, which will be a story in tomorrow's newsletter, by the way. Right. And congratulations, Evanston, Illinois. Yeah, please. Let's see what we have. As long as we're not divided and stay united, we uh, we should be okay. I hope you're yes. right. Uh, you're absolutely Brian. right, Brian. Brian right. Scott, you're absolutely right. And, and I really hope that we can stay uh, united. Well, I also have found out that, um, that Blacks, and and Asians or they call it, or have it's 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 almost the same fight and there were a lot of Asians out there marching with Black Lives Matter a lot mm -hmm. of Asians mm -hmm. there were a lot of whites so it's just you know it's just who who's up whose fight is up at this particular time and I don't think it gets pushed away and where we don't remember it anymore it's just right. that you know because of what we're going through. Um, it's it's the Asian um, the Asian um, seriousness is at the forefront now, and right. it's something that should be dealt with. You know, I agree. I agree with you on, in that respect. And and uh, a lot of folks are saying that you know it's not the same. And uh, this is uh, Joy who's saying I think there is enough uh, there's strength in numbers, and when you combine right. black people, people of color, um, that we can work together. And, and you know who's really a good example of that. Um, and I think she has, has stepped out there as an example. Is Naomi Osaka, the tennis champion? Uh, yes. Her mother yes. is 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 Japanese. Her father is is black. And um, you know, she really came about during uh, the summer with the the Black Lives Matter protest, and, and and in Japan, which was I thought was really interesting. Right. Um, Jay, let us go to entertainment. And you know what? <laughs> I have some great news. What? They're bringing the Arsenio Hall show back, and I'm gonna do a lot <laughs> You know what? He will not answer my my uh, my my tweets or my my calls, but I'm hoping to he get him. He won't answer mine either, and I work. With really? Him, so. <laughs> no. So Arsenio, come on, man. We come, come on, man. On Don't be like that. Talk about talk about we the days through. when Jay would make you close, and and uh, as a <laughs> Jay made Jay made vests at the time. I made a vest. Cool. Yes, yes. Yeah, and what are vests? Uh, they're just jackets the without jacket sleeves. Without well, come sleeves. on, everybody yeah. knows that. <laughs> and Jay was not uh, not easily uh, uh, talented in uh, making a pocket. In the beginning, in the beginning. <laughs> so here's the good news. All Our right. friend Mary Shepherd has a TV show, a new TV what? show. She is going to headline and produce this TV show um, in production with executive producers Viola Davis, uh, Julius Tennant, and Larry Wilmore. And she will be a producer on the show called Black Don't Crack. She's starring and producing. Oh, that is great. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Well, I know not uh, to call because once people get a show, they don't they don't talk to you. So I mean <laughs> I know not to call. I remember well, calling I can't I will not say her name. But she uh, she got her own television show, mm -hmm. and so I called her up and said, um, "Could I do the warm up?" And this is what she said: "God damn it, I'm tired of people calling me and asking me for shit." So I learned. I learned. My, I learned Hello. My <laughs> so let me ask you: when mm -hmm. when you do TV shows and and you you've had your share, um, and especially now <laughs> with assisted living, do you get calls? Yes, you I get. Do. I get. I get requests like. 
Well, I've always I've always been working in a position where the number one thing people say to me is tell blank blank something. You know, you worked for Tom, so you had it. Tell mm -hmm. Tom, right. or now it's tell Steve or tell Mr. Perry. So when I do my act on stage, uh, it's three people I don't talk about: Tom Joyner, um, um, Steve Harvey, mm -hmm. and Tyler Perry. Mr. I don't know any of the shit you know. Now, if you've heard some shit, don't ask me. Cause right. I don't know. I'm going to be as surprised as you are when you ask me. I'm gonna, <laughs> when, when did that happen? <laughs> these people have been very instrumental in putting money in my pocket. So mm -hmm. I don't have any jokes about them. But you're right. People do come to you and tell this and tell that. and Give this to Tom or give, I, you know. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Give this to Tom. You think Tom will play my music? No. <laughs> you, think, you think Steve Harvey will call me back? No, he, he won't call you back. You, you think you can hook me up with Mr. Perry? No, I can't. No, not going to happen. Not unless you're the, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. You know what um, I'm saying? <laughs> um, but but and this is parenthetically. This is not you know talking about people on stage. But you always like to tell people that I was what? <laughs> what did you like to tell people on stage? Because I but would get see, it. You know, you I've never. You know, I've never. Anybody who knows you knows that I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying. <laughs> it's just. It's just the people who don't know you who mm -hmm. go no. And I've always said that Sybil is the meanest, nicest person. No, that's you not what ever. you tell them. You tell them you tell them that now. What did you tell them my habit was? I forgot so what was it? He would tell people that I was a crackhead. Oh yeah. And that, well, yeah, yeah, you just got off crack, Sybil. I mean, I'm just not gonna be saying that. Yeah. <laughs> And he tells people that I was a crackhead and that I'm the meanest, nicest person. As a matter of fact, he got me a birthday cake from Leah Cakes, Sweet Treasures Bakery. And it says, happy birthday to the meanest, nicest person I've ever known in the world. You know, something like that. It was like, um, but let me tell you, let me continue telling you. What was you that about I the, said about Tom? Because I know when I did his those jokes, his ex-wife. Oh, it's like, it was a joke I used to do about. Oh, my Tom. God. Yes. Yeah. About sometimes I just want to tell him to shut the fuck up, and and his ex-wife at the time was laughing so hard. I mean, she, <laughs> but nobody ever talked about Tom like I did. So you know, <laughs> no, he and, and you also talked about the fact that he was married to a, a fitness instructor, <laughs> and he don't work out. <laughs> 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 that put his ass on, on in a in a boxing ring. For yeah, that, sure. yeah, he was he was yeah, and I did it on the cruise too. That was the oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Speaking of comedy, have we talked about <laughs> Gary Owens? <laughs> no, we haven't talked about Gary Owen and his divorce. Um, let me ask you this: not not if you were surprised, because I'm not ever surprised about comedians <laughs> and getting divorces. <laughs> Um, but are you surprised at how people are affected by this announcement? Yes, because it's what? it's a it's a large amount of his material. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, um, um, the girl that cussed out Tyler Perry and uh, what's her name? Um, Monique. Monique. Monique did all these jokes about happily being married, and you know, well, when that goes away. You know, you got to change your act. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I have nothing that mm -hmm. I talk about that's connected to stuff I can't do anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still smoking weed, so I'm going to talk <laughs> about that. I haven't <laughs> lost weight. I'm older. So for Gary, you know, he's really, he's one of the few, he's accepted in the black community mm -hmm. more so than sometimes some black comics, yeah. you know, and it's because of the work that he put in. I'm not saying he just got that you know, and he put the work in, but right. for him to have all these jokes about my wife, this, my wife, that, you know, so now it'll be my ex-wife in the life of being single. So he'll yeah. adapt. He'll definitely adapt. You know, yeah. I always say when you get a divorce, you get 45 minutes of new material just by going to court. Just. <laughs> 
Uh, remember when Ari Spears? I, I forget yeah. how long his divorce tour was. Remember oh, that? Was and every so time he angry. came on, he, he was, was still on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was always on the divorce tour, though. Yeah, he was really angry when she got when he got his divorce. So it, and it and happened. you know, I was I was trying to tell the story of Sherry. That's a big part of her act because yes. you know uh -huh. with two with two exes and, and and all of that. But let me tell, let me let me go back and tell you about this move this TV show. Uh, she's starring in Black Don't Crack, and it follows three former sorority sisters who lost touch after college, and they reunite at a pivotal point in their lives, and they realize sometimes it's okay to crack, and when you do, no one will be there for you like your friends. And so um, she'll play Angela Wright, uh, and uh, they have not. She's it's uh, right is now. Is Kim going to be in it? I'm thinking Kim is probably going to find. You know, Kim is going to find her way yeah. into a Sherry yeah. project. Um, but we don't have any of the other casting. Kim, um, the crush that got away. The crush right. that got away. Um, Kim is doing a really great job on E uh, on the uh, on the entertainment show on E Network. Uh, she's doing a really good job. What is she, she doing? Looks fabulous. It's a um, it's a, is it pop culture that she oh, does yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with with two other people on there? Justin yeah. is the brother, um, but she's doing a really good job, and she looks fabulous. Have you seen her in her Weight Watchers? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> tell tell people about you and Kim. <laughs> well, I had this crush on Kim when I first came to LA. And uh, Kim paid me no attention at all, none, none. Like, I don't think she even noticed me. But with the weird part about it, I got a job on a show that she was on. What was, was it? Sparks? sparks, Sparks, and Sparks, remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my character was a guy who had a crush on Kim's character, but he never got in the building. <laughs> he was always, <laughs> he was outside. always outside. <laughs> In the bushes or whatever, yeah. and, and and calling her name. And call her name. So after the yeah. rejection from Kim, you know, I, I realized that it was never going to happen, and we're just friends. <laughs> but if she gives you a nod, she'll be right there. I'm done. <laughs> okay, um, Jay, it's time for Yogi's Jewels, and I want to give folks an opportunity to uh, make note of this. Uh, as we are in our first week of spring, uh, the first full day of spring, I guess full, full day was Jay's yeah, birthday, uh -huh. March 21st. Hit the refresh button on an old relationship and share a positive word with a loved one. And that includes yourself. Yourself. How is that? Yeah. 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 I like that how, you know, sometimes the yogi's jewel, you never know it's going to come back right at you. You know what I mean? It'll go away <laughs> and then boom, it's Boom, it's on you. That's a great job. And, and um, <laughs> thank you. And and Jay, as we uh, as I also alluded, tomorrow is our friend Elena's birthday. You want to wish her a happy birthday? Hey, Elena, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Is that the uh, nugget lover? Is you talking about the nugget no, lover? No, Leah's Leah's the nugget lover. Oh you see, uh, Jay Jay never remembers people I who never he remember. has worked with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Elena. Oh, oh, I know that. Okay. Well. <laughs> so, Happy birthday. You know what, Elena, don't worry about it. The name was written correctly on the check. That's all. Yes, you know yeah. it. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. All right. Happy birthday. To, uh, happy belated birthday to you. Um, a lot of people. I got on Instagram and wish you a happy uh, Yeah, time. I got a lot of um, shout outs from about my birthday and announced it on the uh, radio show. So pretty good. Pretty good. Thank nice. you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody nice. who uh, acknowledged it. So tomorrow is Wednesday. Myra J and Stephen Hill will be with us. Oh. Jay, uh, tell people about Hotter Than a Mofo. Hotter Than a Mofo.com. Go to Hotter Than a Mofo.com for all your hot sauce needs. We now have salsa. We're doing a giveaway. Go to hotinthemofo.com. And in honor of my in honor of my birthday, we're giving twenty percent off of everything. But I want to congratulate George Wallace's, uh, you know, um, Godzilla versus King Kong. And you got to go see this movie. His mom plays both roles, and oh, wow. just the way she's switching back and forth from the Godzilla costume to the, you know, and this is without makeup, without <laughs> makeup at all. No makeup. She is amazing in this movie. And Say goodbye, please buy Jay. his book. Go buy and, George's and book. That's it. That's, that's here. That's here. Yes. Um, so, Jay, we'll talk to you. We'll see you next Tuesday. 
I'll be on time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, have a good one. Please take a second to watch this. And if you can be a part of this great project, do. See you tomorrow. Watch out, Anna. He can tell you about their first dance, but he can't remember my name. I'm his daughter. Half of all black families are impacted by Alzheimer's, but we don't know why. At HSE, we are investing in a new research study to find solutions for your family. To join the research study, visit blackalzbrainstudy.com or call 817-735-2963.